Hey GED students, let's have a little bit of fun courtesy of Brandon who emailed me this picture of a truck. So yes, we're gonna play. No, you're not gonna see anything that looks just like this truck on your GED. However, I wanna use this truck picture to illustrate something really, really, really important that you do need to understand for your GED and that a lot of students struggle with. So first of all, all we're going to look at here is this little logo on the side of the truck that was printed up here that says Z71 4 by 4 The math work that somebody put on this truck here was not the algebra we need for the GED. They started playing with calculus and doing something different to this expression than we're going to look at, but I just want to play with that little image, Z71 4 by 4 So let's look at the question Brandon asked about what he saw. Brandon said he was driving with a student of his who wanted to play with seeing this on a truck and asked Brandon to attack a math problem. And I think this is interesting language that Brandon uses to attack because there's different ways we attack a problem depending on what we're looking at. You know, in algebra, the two big things, the two big skills you need are simplifying and solving. And I can see from what Brandon asked that the line between the two or the distinction between the two isn't super clear to him and it needs to be clear. So let's look at what he said. He said he attempted on his own by first starting off multiplying four times four will equal 16. And Brandon, I loved that. I see in what you wrote, you wrote Z71 four by four, you know, times four by four that we have that little four times four expression. Always in math, if I see something I can simplify, like I know how to simplify four times four, I could start there. It's a great first start. So I like that you did that. I like that you ended up with Z71 times 16. But where I got lost is you then said to do the inverse of multiplication, you use division. And I said, oh, where'd you get permission to do the inverse? I'm gonna say that again. Where'd you get permission to use inverses? There's only a very specific instance where we're allowed to use inverses. That's the process of basically isolating a variable, getting a letter alone, in order to solve. And we don't have that permission here. And, you know, Brandon, you're not the only one who struggles with this. In fact, just today, I got a message from another student working on what seems to be a completely unrelated problem, but she had the exact same issue. Let's look at hers. So Nat sent me this picture of her absolutely gorgeous notes from solving two-step equations. By the way, Nat, I love them. They are great. But where Nat was confused was this problem on the sticky note here on this yellow sticky note. She wrote down one of the examples I had given during the lesson and said, Kate, this is so confusing. This doesn't match up with what the lesson was about. It seems like it's totally a different thing going on. I don't understand. Help me. And I had to say to Nat, yeah, that's what I was doing in the lesson. I was comparing and contrasting two different situations. So the two situations that you guys need to understand the difference between, not the similarities, the absolute opposite differences between our simplifying expressions and solving equations. Turns out those are two different sides to the same coin. They're opposites, and so they're approached exactly oppositely. And now we'll get back to Brandon's truck. So here I have written down, and we are gonna look at this contrast again. We wanna look at simplifying expressions versus solving equations, two separate things. So first let's look at what Brandon sent me, which was an expression. He wrote this, in his email, Z71 parentheses four times four. Looking at this, this is what I want you to notice, Brandon. I want you to notice the lack of an equal sign. There's no equal sign here. There's no second expression on the other side of an equal sign. 
I have no relationship. An equation is something where I have a relationship of equality. Something is equal to something else. Now, I don't have that here. This is just simply an expression. It's a mixture of numbers, variables, and operations, things to do. Because of that, we're going to obey the symbols. We're going to simplify. This is just an expression. So again, I love that your first step was to simplify the four times four. That does indeed equal 16. And I can, just like you did, drop down everything else that I see. But here's where you went astray. You started busting out opposites. No permission to use opposites right now because I don't have two expressions in relationship to each other. I just have this one expression, this one, you can think of it like a math problem. And so all I'm allowed to do is be obedient to the symbols. I can't use opposites. And so what do I see that's happening here next? I see this 71 is shoved up against the parentheses. The symbols don't tell me to divide. The symbols tell me to multiply. That's what I would do. 71 times 16. And where'd I put my GED calculator? I'm not even trying to do that by hand. I'm focused on algebra. 71 times 16. And I get 1,136. Now take a look at this Z. Do you see how the Z is shoved up against the 71 and the 16? Um, when numbers and letters are shoved together in algebra, they're multiplying. So that Z is also multiplying, but I don't know what Z is. And because I don't have an equation here, I have no way of figuring out what Z is. And so all I can do is say that whatever Z is, it's still multiplying with this simplified number. And so I am going to just shove the Z on the backside. Now you might say, why did the Z go last? Well, this is just normal. We generally write the number first and the variable second when writing algebraic expressions. It's just a normal thing. 1136Z means the same as 1136 multiplying by Z. And this is as far as I can go. I can't do any work to find out what Z is because I don't have a relationship. I don't have any clues. If I were just tackling the problem you sent me, Brandon, what I would be saying to myself is simplify this expression. Do all the math you can do and then stop. I stopped at 1136Z because there was no more math I could do. I couldn't do the final act of multiplication because I don't know what Z is. I'm done. Now, if you happen to look closely at the first picture, the one that was actually on the truck, you would have seen that the first step that they did was a little different. They looked at the 71 being on top of the four times four and translated that as a division because it was on top. They imagined that they saw a, a line there expressing division. Now, whether or not you saw that as division or not, this would still be an expression. I don't have an equal sign. I don't have another side. So I would still simplify by obeying the symbols. I just have different symbols now. So I would have started the same way with the four by four on the bottom, 16. I would have kept that fraction bar that I imagined and the 71 and the Z. And then Brandon, you did mention in your email that you sent me that you didn't know if it was wrong to use remainders. It's not wrong to use remainders. We just don't do it in high school very much because we have skills that take us beyond the understanding of remainders. So when you're dividing and you're left with a remainder, you can stop there. Just say I have some remainder left over. Or you can use fractions or decimals to talk about pieces and parts of numbers. In pure algebra, we tend to use fractions. And so this fraction, 71 over 16, is a totally legit number that I'm totally fine with. Uh, the only thing I should try to do is reduce it if possible. But whether you reduce by hand or you type it into your TI, you're gonna see that this fraction doesn't reduce. And so what I have here is Z multiplying with 71 over 16. And so what I would do is just like I said before, write the number first, 
write the letter second, and that would be the simplified expression if I read it the way that the student did, or the math professor, or just the random wandering weirdo who marked on that truck, interpreting it as division. But either way, you're going to see that neither one of these answers give me any clue about what Z is. Z could literally be anything. Now let's flip to what I think you were thinking, Brandon, because I heard you start talking about opposites. I'm thinking you were treating this like it had an equal sign. If I can say that the Z71 is a four by four, that's why I wanted to do this video because we could interpret it that way. I mean, hello, if I could say that the Z71 truck is a four by four. And if I get to use that word is, if I'm saying that those are two separate ways to say the same thing, I could call that truck a Z71 or I could call them a four by four. It's equivalent, they're the same thing. Then I get an equal sign. And guess what? With an equal sign, I do have the power to solve for Z. I'm able to do whatever I want, and that includes using inverses, moving backwards, disobeying signs, in order to actually figure out what Z is equal to. So I'll start the same way, Brandon, because the left-hand side is an expression and the right-hand side is an expression. If there's any simplifying to do on either side, I can do it. So I can do four by four is 16. And I can also say to myself, yeah, Z times 71. Well, how do we usually write that as mathematicians? We usually write it as 71 Z. And now, knowing that those two sides are equal, now I could solve. Now I could figure out what Z must be equal to by using inverses. It's only when I have this two-sided thing, this relationship between a left and a right-hand side that I'm able to use those inverses like you were talking about effectively. So if I wanted to get Z alone, I would do the opposite of multiply, which is dividing by that number 71. And I can do whatever I want to, an equation, not an expression, Brandon, an equation, as long as I do it to both sides. So let's pop that divided by 71 over. And then I wanna to talk to you, Nat, the second person who sent me a problem today. And I wanna point out that when I see my balance change line, this is the one mistake I saw in your beautiful notes. You need to see the same operation and the same number twice. Don't be that lazy student and I don't think you were being lazy, I just think you missed it. But don't be that lazy student who only writes it on one side where you don't have balance change, you're lopsided. I need to see divide by 71 or add three or whatever thing I'm doing on both sides. And that's why I can make this change because I'm keeping the two sides equal and that will only happen if I see the exact same math on both sides. So make sure your balance change is two-sided or you're not expressing what you think you're expressing. Enough of that lecture. Let's get back to what my answer would then be. Multiplying by 71 and dividing by 71 are inverses, as Brendan pointed out, opposites. And so they do cancel. And so Z is alone. And now I'm allowed to do that because I did the same math on the other side, 16 divided by 71. And again, that's not something that's going to happen nicely. If I take 16 and divide by 71, I'm going to get some ugly answer. In fact, in this case, Brandon, it'd be all remainder. And so I have two options. Again, I can use a decimal or I can use a fraction. And I'm a mathematician and I'm lazy and I don't want to mess with decimals unless I have to. And so I'll just leave that as the fraction 16 over 71. And if you're mad at me for having fractions in my answers, you guys, go check out that video that I have on the YouTube channel, which basically explains why some of our answers when we solve end up being fractions. But this is a very different type of answer than I had over here. This is a simplified expression. It tells me how many Z's I have, but I don't know what Z is. Same thing here, this is a simplified expression. It tells me how many Z's I have. It's an ugly number of Z's, but still it's some number of unknown Z's. I don't know, Z could be 11, Z could be 43, Z could be 176, I have no idea. But that's how many I have of Z. And on this side, this is a very different statement. This tells me exactly what Z is. Z is this 
number. And I was only able to pinpoint Z's value because I had an equation. I had a clue. I had another side to help me figure out the mystery. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I just want to send a quick shout out to everybody who supports me and my work and light and salt learning and all the GED students across the world who benefit from that. And I want to also share with you two new cool opportunities for people who give to Light and Salt Learning. So first thing is a thank you to my patrons, and I have a new level of patronage that is for you teachers. So if you are an adult education instructor or GED teacher or tutor, or even just a math teacher really, who's looking to up their game with struggling students, I've got some special resources for you at the new teachers in training level of patronage over on Patreon. You can have access to exclusive tips and tricks from me on how to work with struggling students, most specifically in math. And my specialty is with students who have what I call symbolic processing issues. So, you know, those students you keep teaching and teaching and teaching and math just keeps looking like a bunch of nonsense all over the page. Uh, sometimes I joke with my students that it looks like visual vomit to them and they just can't seem to make sense of it. Those are my people and those are the ones I want to help equip you to work with. You know, you can tell me, I've got a student who's struggling with this. How can I help him? And I will be happy to make resources for you. So I also want to thank all my faithful supporters who aren't getting anything out of it, but they're giving $15 a month just to be light and salt and make sure that GED students are equipped with the resources that they need to be successful. Thank you to you. Thank you to my supporters coming in at that $9 a month level, sprinkling a little salt there for students worldwide. And I appreciate my shine a little light patrons as well at just $3 per month. This is an excellent way for GED students. I know y'all don't have a lot of disposable income, but if you want to pay it forward so the next generation of classes has access to the resources that you had, this is a great way. Shine a little light. And then, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee in the last year since I've been doing this. And then to those of you who just started giving for the tutoring student that I've been telling you I've been working with, been working with this girl for a decade. And she's working so, 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 so hard, but she just keeps getting so many obstacles thrown in her path. And so a few of you had been giving cups of coffee for my student C to help with to pay for her practice tests and her read tests of her GED. And if that was you, thank you. If you want to give, you're able to do that on my Buy Me A Coffee page, but do make sure that you say that this is for C. And then I will know that it is to go for her needs. Thank you all so much and happy learning.